Hi, and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this video, we'll be continuing with RotoAnim Basics. We'll start with a key pose, and we'll begin to adjust the rig to fit the person a little bit better. So I'm going to open Maya, and you can go to your data package. You'll have a free rig and some free footage to work with. So if we go to File, Import, I'm just going to import the camera first. It's RM002, Jogger import that and we go file import and we'll bring in the ground plane as well so if we zoom out we see we've got a ground plane let's just group this straight away control g let's call this match move and let's select the camera and lock everything so we don't accidentally change any of this and we can select this, our group, make a layer, call it MM for match. I won't be able to, MM underscore layer, save, and we'll change this to R. So now we can't select it. So you've loaded in our camera and we've made it so we can't break it. So if we select our panels, go to perspective, select our camera, and we want to change our frame range because I always start my frame ranges at 1001. And I think this one is 1080. Might be wrong. But we'll just select our camera, go view, image plane, and import image. Then you should have your plane. It's 51 frames. So select open. You can see we've got our image plane in now. So now if we go to our tribute editor, let's change our alpha gain to 0 0.7, but you can change it to whatever you like, what's a bit more comfortable for you. Always find 0 0.7 is pretty good. Select use image sequence. You can leave this as raw, then change our depth to one. And then we can go up to shading here. Make sure smooth shade all is on, then wireframe on shaded. So now you can sort of see the ground plane there, but it won't be so clear because of um. It's referenced in the layer. So now if we go File, Import, and let's go to our rig. So Roto Woman, we'll import that in. And here she is. So this, these rigs are pretty much for Maya because it's the free rigs that I could find. And um, it's the same methods on other pieces of software, so don't worry about that. You can follow it with your own rig if you have one. So I'm just going to go to tear off copy. And I'm going to just orientate this to the side. I'm going to select panels, perspective. So now I can see my perspective and I have can see my camera. So like with all rigs, have a play around with it. This is completely different to the first one. This one's uses um, is a bit less restrictive. It's got squash and stretch on it, so you can make a really ridiculous if you wanted to, but um, we're probably not going to do that. So we've got more sort of flexibility to make the, the rig fit a little bit better. Because obviously we can see in comparison to... Oh, let's change our... Let's change our um, timeline. So if we look at the proportions of this uh, lady, we can see that the, the rigs is, is quite far off, but we can make it fit quite well. So the same with every Rotoanim. The first thing that you want to do is check for contact points. And luckily we can see the feet. So we'll always use a contact point to get the first initial lineup. Then it's mostly picking a frame, which you think is going to be a... Uh, the, the sort of, not the hardest to line up, but um, one that shows the most uh, movement in the rig. So she's jogging. This is quite like, with a lot of row animal tasks, you, you're probably going to end up someone running or walking. So it's probably the most common sort of thing you'll do for row to anim. Um, for more um, tighter ones, it'll be, more, it'll be closer up and you'll have 
better rigs and stuff. When you're working in production, you, you'll have much better rigs. So this is just really good practice. So, do you know what? Let's actually start on the first frame. Got a good contact point. A leg's sort of bent up and our knees at 90 degree angle and we can see everything. She's looking quite straight. So, take your time, pause it, pause the video and just have a play around with the rig. This one does work a little bit different, but it's it's still fairly similar. So you've got the waist control and you can she'll squat down. And you've got your foot, feet controllers here, which will do the same thing. You've also got like different knee controllers here now, so we can pull these out. You can control them a little bit better. And you've also got some facial stuff if you want to play around with that, but um, we won't be needing any of this. Cool, so let's just undo that. She's squatting. So our first thing that we need to do is try and get this. In fact, let's. Yeah, let's do the first frame. So we can, like, I've set this all up so it already comes at the zero point so you don't have to worry about that. But say if um, you're working with something that's a little bit different and you're Geo comes in, it's always good to make sure that your feet are on the ground because this is going to be your most important reference. So I'm just going to slide the rig back and I'm just going to try and get these feet. If you hold backslash and enable 2D pan, so with this you can move around, it makes things a lot easier. We're just going to push this back until roughly we can sort of. We get a rough idea of our um, position. So we can kind of see that it's a little bit tall at the moment, but because she's got bent legs, because the leg is completely straight at the moment. So, and you can also see that how largely the proportions are out. But you'll be surprised how much of a, a common thing this is when you're working in production. You'll have rigs that might not fit. In some cases, you will have rigs that fit perfectly. The rigs that don't fit perfectly, you have a little bit more leeway for it not being perfect. But when they've got like a scan of an actor and it's rigged and it works well, you, you have nothing really to hide behind because it should work pretty much perfectly. Unless there's clothes and stuff, which make it a little bit more tricky. So what I've done here, I've just pulled the left foot back because my contact point is my most important bit of reference then I've selected the waist and I'm going to sort of I'm going to pull off the side so I can see and you can see our waist is about here and our pelvic bone and we'll just sort of match that and because it's quite the hips on this rig is quite large we'll just get it roughly in the center because what we're going to do we're going to do a first pose then we're going to adjust the geometry with a um a blend shape to fit a little bit better. So we're going to go through and do exactly what we did in the first one and get sort of key pose lined up. So I'm going to start with the feet. I should be working between my perspective and my camera whilst always making sure it's lining up here but also checking in my perspective that it's doing something logical and not anything crazy. So I'm just going to rotate that foot back and sort of see the angle of it. And you kind of have to use sort of your own human knowledge of how people run as well. So but obviously we're not, it's not going to be absolutely perfect because it doesn't fit perfectly but we can get it relatively close and it'll probably look weird at start because but we'll work on it so we've got these knees fairly close in let's make it a lot easier with these little controls to pull the knees around Put 
direct them a little bit easier. So, we've got something roughly close. Now let's look at the head. You can see our head's come way down. But, if we pull our hips away, make sure that you're using this main control because you've got other controls here for the rotations. But, if we pull our hips away, we can sort of see they're roughly in the right place and our, our knees are working. The problem is that the proportions of this are just a little bit off. So what we can do, we can just select from our hips. Let's select our waist. And you want to do this on your first pose and not do it at all through the rest of it. If your rig's really not fitting and it's that kind of out of proportion, you have one pose that you can do this on. Because you can't do this again after you've done it, otherwise you're kind of shifting her body shape. So do it on one pose and then that's it. You have to commit to that pose. So what I'm doing now, I'm actually translating this body up. Obviously, that's physically even possible in real life to do that. But because we're adjusting, because in this rig we have got squash and stretch, we can slightly manipulate it to sort of fit a little bit better. So I'm just going to pull it up. I'm not going to pull it on all of them, uh, on just one. I'm going to spread it out between these sort of joints. Roughly get that head up to the correct height. So we didn't have to move it that much. If we zoom in on this head, we can sort of see with the eye control. So if we just select our camera here, let's change our near clip and plane to one. Should we select those? Let's hide the face group. We don't need that. So you can hide your face group. Yeah, let's try and get this as much in the rotation as possible. And don't worry if it doesn't fit perfectly. We can uh, try it. Obviously, we don't like your head is there, but obviously, one of the most obvious things you don't want to do is pull the head up because that you can see that straight away that doesn't look right. We want to, if we're adjusting the rig, we want to gently do it throughout the sections so it doesn't look so weird and you only have to do it a slight amount but if you're working in a production environment the chance that you probably have one that's already been checked for a conform scene and it probably works really well so we're just going to rotate this round so we get this off chest in the right place. Rotate this head around. You can rotate this around to fit. So let's slightly rotate there. And the closer you get this, the easier your life will be on your first frame. So bring this shoulders up. And don't spend hours and hours trying to get this perfect. It's just a different person. But we can get it we can get it reasonably close. Of course we've got our feet there and then working on the knees are in the correct place. So let's try the arms. So just like this shoulder control. And it's fairly reasonable. We see our elbow there. Let me select our elbow joint and let's pull that up. We can zoom in and let's try and get on this one. Should we try and get our hands in a nicer place? Because I know on the first one it was kind of running like a uh, Ken hands. So let's try and match these up a little bit better. Like I said, strong chance that they may not line up that well, but let's, let's just try. So first of all, I'm going to just select. So probably should have that. So I'm going to select the jo Oh, let's actually leave it for now because we need to change that. So make sure you don't select the geometry and you're just selecting the controls. You can lock the geometry. Should be locked. There we are. So it's already got a group, so select 
R, and that should stop you from selecting it. So with the thumb, I'm going to select the top of the top control first. Just going to bring it up. Just going to make sure it looks logical. You want to bring it up a little bit past it. Then select the next one and bring it down. And you can see it, it sort of fits pretty well. It's uh, not that bad. So we'll go on to the index finger. And I think this has got some sort of curl on it, but we'll just, we'll only need to do this once because we're not going to do it for every single one. So I'm just going to go through each of these controls and you can just about sort of see the joints. It's only it's, this is only for basic uh, rotoanim, body tracking, whatever you call it. It's, it's called multiple things. People like to call it body tracking rotoanim. It's quite popular to call it body tracking now because it doesn't share the same name as roto rotoscoping. So there's no chance that I can ever get mixed up. But rotoanim, rotomation, body tracking. It's all it's all the same thing. So, whilst we're doing this, we're also making it so it doesn't look crazy. Trying to match as many of these sort of joints as possible. I can't quite see that. I think the joints there. I think I've mentioned it. Let's have a look at them. Can't quite see. Okay, so let's get these knuckles in a bit of a reason place. It's more like that. You're fairly limited on this rig for hands by the looks of it. It's not going to fit absolutely perfectly. You're not going to have the world's tightest body track from this, but body tracking is one one of those things that you have to do it loads and loads of times, and you'll you'll just get better at better at it over time. It's, it's practically the same as animation, but it's got its different pros and cons and pitfalls. We'll just go through. And we're only going to do this hand once. We're not going to animate it every single time because that would. Just... Well, we'll see how far we get through this first. Then we'll decide on that. We've got to do this first key pose and adjust the body first. So let's try and get this in. You can see how much on this rig we've got much more control on where we're placing it. A lot of rigs, when you're working in production, won't have that luxury. Just bring this hand back up. But for the case of this rig, you can get away with just, well, not just this rig. If you can do it on any rig, you should only ever do it on one keyframe, on one pose, sorry. Because people don't mutate as they walk. So. So just bring this down, so bring this shoulder in. And because we've got this pretty good control over it. Obviously, if you, you don't want to, because I've not changed, the only things that I've pushed are the shoulders on this, I've not changed the distance from the elbows or the arms at all. So you don't want to make that arm longer than the other, just to make it fit. Make sure that you're being even throughout. So the likelihood that's, that's elbows coming in, we can sort of see the position of our arms. It's possible it just needs rotating around. We can bring that in. Uh, 
to bring this hand down. We'll just zoom in on this hand. Try and align those knuckles. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. So now we'll do the other hand. Yeah, let's start with the thumb again. We'll just bring that up. You can see there, it's lined up pretty close. I'm actually quite surprised how well this rig works. And we'll do the same with the fingers. Try and match those knuckles. But whilst you're matching, and make sure that you're not. Just always check your perspective. That's the one key thing that I can always say. So you don't want to. If you find that you're in a position where you have to make things fit, and they're like looking like that, you, there's something wrong with your initial pose. So just always take your time. Don't, it doesn't matter if this takes you an hour, a day, two days, or anything like that. Just if you if you be very like particular with it and be very accurate with your lineups, it will, it will make everything so much easier. I say all with Roto Anim, your key thing is your key poses. And we'll just go through and do these last two fingers. Quite hard to see it. You can just about see the knuckles. I'm just bringing that in. Cool. So I know it's a little bit hands quite basic but sort of if you've gone over something that we didn't do on the previous one and we can always see it's it's looking a bit better so most of this is fitting really well but obviously the proportions are out on some areas like she's got this rig has got massive thighs so our next step with this first initial pose because we've adjusted the rig we're going to create a blend shape to sort of relax these thighs. Um, it's mostly if, if you just don't have that rig and it would just give you the sort of knowledge to be able to adjust your rigs to sort of fit reasonably any character. So, so you have a male rig now and then you have a female rig. So now you can try it with both with your own sort of footage and stuff. And then you'll know how I, I generally use if I've got a rig that doesn't fit. I can use these sort of methods to sort of persuade it into place. Cool. So I'm quite happy with our first key pose. So what I'll actually do, I'm going to pick my main controls that I'll probably use throughout. I'm going to press S so it creates a keyframe because if you forget to keyframe them, it's not going to save it and you'll lose it or keyframe over it. So. Might be easier if I do it in my perspective. So, just done the head. Press S on my shoulders. On my shoulders, I'm selecting these ones, not these ones, because these are more the the clavicle. Because we've already adjusted those, we shouldn't have to adjust that that much. But I'm just going to pick these shoulder parts. Press S to key it, and I'm going to do it on the elbow and wrist. Do it on both sides. S shoulder s on the elbow s on the wrist and if you want to do the hands perfectly fine i probably will see what how far we go through at the end because it could take quite a while so we're definitely going to keyframe our waist and what we can do we can keyframe each one of these because we'll probably need those as well so now we move down to our knees We'll definitely need to keyframe these because she's running and the knees will be moving in and out. And then we'll do we can select both and just keyframe both at the same time. Press S. 
So now everything that we're going to be probably using is going to be keyframed. Don't know what the... Let's keyframe the toe curl as well. We may as well. She's wearing trainers, so it's going to be... Yeah, we'll do it anyway. So we've keyframed our keyfos. So now what we want to do, we want to kind of fix the proportions on our hips. So this this first part of uh, our um, 002 is just getting our rigs a little bit. Getting tighter to the character. So if I turn my uh, R, on, select R on my layer, so I can actually select the geometry. So make sure you save this first, because editing blend shapes can sometimes crash your machine. So make sure you save it before starting any of this. I'll actually pull this, that foot's actually not in the right place. Bring that forward a bit. Well, she's wearing trainers, so there's going to be some sort of misalignment. But if we get these knees in nice, we shouldn't have to worry too much. Cool. So I'm going to select my mesh. And I'm going to go up to Windows, Animation Editors, and Shape Editor. And as you can see, this has already got a load of blend shapes on. And this is for the face, so we can select here. We can minimize all these because we don't need to play with those. Because these are all for the facial rig. So the first thing that you want to do is click add create blend shape, sorry. And we'll name this we'll name this legs. Because we'll we'll just adjust both the legs and one blend shape. So now once you've got the legs selected, you need to add a target. So now you've got our body in our target for our blend shape. And what we can do, if we select the key, that means we're keying it so we can turn it, whatever now we edit to the legs, we can turn off, we can use the slider to either turn it off or reduce the amount so we can sort of edit it uniformly. So now we've done that, you've got your create your blend shape and you've made your target. Obviously you need to make sure that your body's selected, otherwise you'll make a target on something else. We can now just, just minimize that. And we need to edit these thighs. So I'm just going to use the sculpting tool and I'm going to use the sculpting relax because I don't want to actually sculpt anything here. I don't want to change the legs. I'm quite happy with the way they are. And if you sculpt it, you'll probably change some of the skinny. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to relax it. If I double click on here so I can bring up my tools for that. I'm probably going to reduce the strength to 50. Then I can see it's more on the side, so I'm just going to, with my relax tool, just relax my geometry. Oh, 50 might be a bit too low. Let's put that back on 100 and try that again. Well, maybe let's try the smooth. Yeah, the smooth's a little bit better. So let's change that to 80. We're just going to go around, not doing too much at the same time, just gently make sure that you follow the flow of the leg when you're doing this, because you don't want to change it too much abnormally. You want to do it fairly uniformly all over. And all we're doing is just reducing the hips on on this model so just go around it don't just go in your camera view and just select the bits that are over you want to just go all the way around it and just keep doing that until you see how it's kind of disappeared here We can use the relax to relax this as well. Just be careful you don't do it too much. Otherwise, you will have to undo it. And it's, it's going to look kind of weird. So you just have to just because just, the body kind of fits with the jacket. So obviously her body would be really quite a lot slimmer through this. But I'm actually quite happy to leave it the body that wide. It's going to look odd, really. But um, unless you want to make clothes for her, that's that's absolutely fine. 
So I'm just going to go back to my smooth tool, sorry. I'm just going to do the same thing. Just going to go around. And sort of smooth it out uniformly. And using the sort of shape editor will really help you with sort of getting rigs a little bit better because then you can still use this for body tracking and stuff. You can make animated body tracks with um, blend shapes, especially if you're doing clothing. So let's look at uh, thigh. So we've kind of got it a lot thinned down now. Let's have a look at let's. Let's do it in a thigh as well. So, if you hold B, change your brush size. So we've kind of got some weird stuff in here. This is probably going to look very weird in perspective because we just got mismatching proportions. But so that's actually looks weird. So if we just select our control and let's to hide that. See, it's sort of it's matching a bit further up. It's including the jacket, so let's not worry about that. So we're going to sort of add the jacket into this sort of... We're going to forget that it's naked. We're going to just make it so her whole body sort of matching the the shape of the the person running. So I'm just going to... In fact, we'll just do the legs because we've just done the legs. And yeah. So we can now select edit. Now it's disabled for the legs. And let's create another blend shape. Well, we need to make sure we have the mesh selected. Create the blend shape, and we're going to call this um, we'll call this torso because we're trying to get most of it all in one. Because we only really need to do these, this waist. And we'll select this and select add target. Then we key it. And we can just minimize this, and we'll just do the same thing again. But what we'll do is use the sculpt tool. And you want to have this how heavy it is. It's really heavy. So we want to make sure that this is really low. And in fact, before we do that, let's turn off edit. To make this easier, let's just raise our arms up. Because we know we've got a good pose. Uh, but we don't really want to sort of sculpt over these arms because they fit all right and it'll be difficult to get it right anyway. So I'm going to go back to the body, go back to my torso and select edit. I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to select my sculpt tool. And you should have it quite low. We're just going to use quite a large brush so we're not making weird lumps or anything. And the body shape's gonna look weird because she's kind of naked, but we're gonna we're not worrying about that. We're pretending that she's fully clothed. So we'll just kind of try and do an even amount on both sides. And you can spend more time getting this more accurate. I'm gonna go and select the relax tool as well. Just in case I've done any weird stuff. I probably have. But like I say, if you spend more time on this. It'll probably work better. And you'll let's just hide hide that as well because it looks really weird. Obviously, yes, she's got boobies underneath, so let's not worry too much about that. Let's oh. So let's let's just 
use the smooth and sort of not make them look too ginormous. I know this looks weird, right? We've made a really weird looking uh, person now, but it doesn't matter. We're just trying to get those out of the way. We don't really need them. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so we've done our torso. We can put these arms back now. So if you rotate them around, if we zoom in. Cool. Now we'll do the other one. So we're going to assume that she's clothed on this. So it's going to look weird in perspective. But hopefully our animation won't. So, yeah, have your have your laughs and stuff now, and it does look very odd. <laughs> but uh, but now we've done that, we've got our sort of legs fitting, our heads and arms in. So we want to turn off edit. If you forget that, turn that off. Everything that you do is going to be added to the blend shape. So make sure that edit is off. So now everything's turned off, and you can use these sliders to sort of slide it on and off if you need to but I don't think we're going to need to do that and that's just how these sort of blend shapes work and they're really useful for stuff like this so we'll just leave them as they are because we're not going to need to keyframe them and we can just close that now and I'd say that's probably pretty much it for this this one and we'll on the next one on the next tutorial we'll just go through and we'll do our key poses again then on the third one, we'll go through and do refinement. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and um, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.